As a first-time buyer in Scotland, you will be faced with a number of challenges when trying to buy your first home, whether that's saving up for your deposit or even finding the perfect house within your budget. In today's episode, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about how you can choose the perfect home in Scotland when buying your first property. The first thing that I would do when you're aiming to buy your your perfect home is to determine your budget. So get your budget sorted out. So understand how much it's going to cost you for the mortgage payments and understand how much the household running costs are going to be. Things like gas and electric payments, if there's any factor fees involved, if there's any um, utility costs that are uh, unusual council tax. All of these kind of things need to be factored in when you are assessing your budget. And you also need to consider how much the lenders are willing to give you. So there's two sides to budget. So there's how much you're willing to spend and how much a lender's willing to give you. So that's the two main drivers. Once you understand how much you're happy to spend in your monthly budget, you need to get pre-approved from a lender to make sure that the lender's actually going to give you that money. A few tips I could give you in regards to determining your budget, what you could do is you could separate your commitments and general spending so that you can see how much you're actually spending on everyday things and how much of that is for your commitments on a monthly basis. And commitments can be things like phone bills, gym memberships, TV packages, and what you could even do is separate them into different bank accounts to help you manage it. But once you've determined your budget, you need to also consider the location in which you're planning to buy. So consider and make sure that the location meets your requirements. I spoke about this just the other day on another episode. Kind of things that you need to be looking for is things like the crime rates, school systems, the transport links, how close it is to family, how close it is to work, and make sure that you can get the right location for your needs. If you uh, if all your friends are in one area and you work in one area and you're buying a house in your own that's miles away from that, you really need to consider what the benefit of you buying out there is. If it's really just to save a little bit of money, are you going to be isolating yourself? So take all of these kind of things into consideration. Once you've done that, what you need to do is determine what is a requirement of yours when you're looking to buy. So create a list. If you need a list, let me know and I can get you a copy of one that I send out to my clients. But take into consideration things like the number of bedrooms in a property, the outdoor space, the parking facilities. Is it within a certain catchment area that you're looking for? And determine what it is that you are not willing to compromise on. And then that will help you decide on what properties are going to be the right ones for you. Um, once you've done that, I would also suggest if you are uh, going out to view properties, I, I would certainly consider working quite closely with a local estate agent. The local estate agents can help you understand the local market. They are there to sell properties, but they're also the best point of contact to understand what's actually happen, happening in local areas. They can help you understand what trends are there, um, what areas are in demand. And what I would suggest is be open with them about exactly what you want and the things that you won't compromise on. And they could even reach out to you when these properties become available. The final thing that I would do and the final tip that I would give you would be to visit potential homes and visit in person if possible. There's modern technology. You can do viewings remotely nowadays, which is great. But to get a feel for it, you really need to go out there and view the house. So if it's at all possible, I would recommend that you actually go out and do the viewings yourself. What I would do is when you're doing the viewings, review the home report, take that with you, keep an eye out for any potential issues that could be on the home report have a look at what kind of impact it's got in the property. And again, take notes and get yourself a checklist. If you need a checklist, as I say, let me know and I can get you one. But that's it for today. If you do uh, find this useful, don't forget to give it a like and a share. And please don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.